So do you need a college degree to be a cloud computing professional? The answer may surprise you. Let's talk about it. Hey everybody, welcome to the Cloud Computing Insider YouTube channel where we talk about the truth of cloud computing and generative AI. I'm your host, David Linthicum, author, speaker, B-list geek, and here to reveal the details behind how this stuff works, how to manage your career, how to leverage this technology effectively, and how to be more productive with the use of cloud computing and other technologies for that matter. Let's get started. So it's June uh, 2024 as I'm recording this, and which is graduation season. Uh, uh, here in the United States. Uh, I'm not sure in other parts of the world, but uh, lots of folks are graduating college and lots of folks are graduating high school and it's a time for excitement and uh, lots of uh, change that's going on in their lives. And of course, people often ask me with their new college degrees, did they actually need this to become a college professional or just getting out of high school, do they need to achieve a college degree to become a cloud professional? And I think that's a fair question. And I think the reality is that in the last uh, 30 years since I've been in the industry, since you know I was 18 years old and I'm 62 now, uh, things have changed. So the attitudes toward college degrees has evolved a bit, uh, not necessarily in a bad way, uh, but they have changed. So back when I was in college or back when I was young, it was kind of understood that you had to get a college degree in whatever discipline that you wanted to get a degree in, you know, pre-law, computer science, uh, business, accounting, whatever. And that was kind of your entry into some sort of a job in that field. And the degree was almost mandatory. Uh, that, at least that's what I was told. So everybody had to get a college degree. It has to be the minimum, sometimes a graduate degree, and a, certainly an advanced degree to become a lawyer or a doctor, things like that. Well, the industry shift did a, in the last 30 years. And so the idea that a degree is always going to be required is not that much of a mandatory thing anymore. And what's happened is that as the demand for skilled professionals, certainly in cloud computing, but other technical fields as well, engineering, software engineering, AI, things like that, has, has exploded, um, the HR departments and the recruiters are willing to look at people who do not have formal degrees as people who are going to be skilled to move into those positions. And so th they're going to put a heavier weight on the skills that you have Perhaps the micro certifications you pass, AWS Architect, AWS Developer, Microsoft, Google, what have you, then they are um, whether or not you have a college degree or not and the type of degree that you have. So that's an interesting change. And so I'm never going to tell people who don't have a degree not to consider moving into cloud computing. They have to go back to college and get a degree. That, that's normally going to be an optional thing. So they can certainly, they, they certainly need the skills, so, so they either have to learn themselves or go through the micro certifications, which are the certifications that the cloud providers provide, and those are, you know, a couple hundred bucks uh, to get those certifications versus a college degree, which can be as much as $400,000. And that's certainly fine, and it provides them with an entry-level position in the particular field, and they're able to grow their career directly from that. So, and that, I, and I think ultimately, uh, that's the way it is today. So college degrees, um, are still going to have importance and there's still employers out there that require or, or prefer a college degree. But the reality is there's lots of jobs to be had out there where college degrees aren't mandatory. So let's talk about that a bit. So the industry shifted, um, toward this and uh, you know ultimately the attitude for informal education has has shifted as well uh, and I think that since the demand for cloud skills has exploded you know certainly in the last 15 years they're willing to compromise in terms of someone's uh, owning a college degree or not having a college degree even the type of degree that you have and uh, colleges also are supporting cloud training themselves so Many colleges and universities, you know, for example, I teach at, I teach at LSU, their continuing education division, are supporting these tactical micro certifications as well. So most of the people who take my uh, college courses are going to be people who already have college degrees. They're just looking to get the skills 
to take them to the next level. So the key thing to take away there is that things have changed. Uh, college degrees aren't necessarily a mandatory requirement. And if you don't happen to have a degree, uh, you certainly can move forward to the cloud profession if you're willing to put the work in time to get the skills you need uh, to obtain the job. And if you do have a degree, for example, a degree that's not a, in a technical profession, for example, history, uh, social, you know, social studies, things like that, and lots of people have those types of degrees, you can certainly retrain into cloud computing. In fact, a lot of people in the cloud computing field, if you ask them about their college training, uh, they're going to tell you about a degree program that they took, philosophy, for example, that was not necessarily directly related to what they're doing as a career, which is common. So if you don't need a college degree, what kind of skills do you need and where can you find the training? Well, I did a video and I'll go ahead and post it up here on uh, how to break into cloud computing in three months and put together a plan in terms of what you can take and, and uh, the ability to get different micro certifications and different skill sets to find your first job in, in cloud. And obviously it's going to be dependent on you and your ability to go out and uh, aggressively look for a job and aggressively learn the technology and being fully committed to uh, you know, make, maintaining this role and learning these skills. But it's possible uh, if you have the willingness to do so, and it doesn't matter if you have a degree or not. And it may not matter if you have a high school degree. So there's lots of certifications out there, AWS, Google, Microsoft, um, Oracle, and that you can leverage where you get these micro certifications. They can be done online. They're a couple of hundred bucks typically, uh, and they'll even help you with uh, with with uh, placement. Uh, so you can take them from a training company, Go Cloud Careers, LinkedIn Learning, uh, Plural Site, those sorts of things, or even directly from the cloud providers themselves, and they manage these skill sets, and it becomes a profit center unto themselves. And obviously, it's it's there in their benefit to have more people out there that are skilled in their particular type of technology. Obviously the trade-off is that you are just going to learn about a silo technology, about AWS, Microsoft, or Google. You can certainly learn about all of them, but most um, people who start out in cloud computing are going to specialize uh, verse in one cloud versus another. And then we're going to look for a job with people who are looking to hire those skill sets and specifically looking for those certifications. That's probably the easiest way to obtain a job. Uh, whether you have a college degree or not. Uh, boot camps are, are also a, uh, uh, an option out there. Intensive programs, normally they last a week or even a weekend. They fast track learning. Uh, some people like to learn that way where you're sitting uh, in a very intensive program eight hours a day uh, you know, for, for a week or a couple of days. Depends on how, what, what you're learning. And that's going to be fine. So instead of taking something over an eight-week program like you would with some of the micro certifications, you can do this on the fast track. Some people like to learn that way. Some people don't. I don't like to learn that way. I'd, I'd rather take my time uh, and try it out and uh, learn things at my pace versus trying to go through a very intensive boot camp training program. So if you have the personality that's able to do that, by all means do that. But, but it's not for everybody. Uh, Self-directed learning, exploring available Availability of online courses, tutorials, things like that. Um, again, you know, I have 70 cor 72 courses out on LinkedIn Learning. There's, you know, hundreds of other cloud computing courses out there, different skill sets, architecture, things like that, specific, specific to a particular cloud provider and many that are not. Pluralsight, Go Cloud Careers, uh, and the cloud providers themselves. Again, self-directed is you're figuring out what you need to learn and you're learning on your own pace. They do have uh, career paths. Through those things where you can get uh, you know digital transformation certifications where you you're taking uh, you know 20 courses uh, for example my courses and from other providers that are able to get you to the skill sets that you need to have the basics or what they consider the basics understanding of being someone who's going to be a digital transformation expert including the cloud skills so those are out there as options so it's not only just moving down a particular path with a single cloud provider but the ability to move to a different profession, such as architecture, digital transformation specialist, security architect, things like that. And there's paths of learning that these training um, companies will provide you. And then practical experience, the ability to have hands-on experience. Um, normally, cloud providers have free tiers, or they're very inexpensive, and there's no reason you can't go out there and start coding things and trying stuff and and getting hands-on experience with a particular cloud providers, particular pieces of technology, and start think thinking through this stuff on your own. 
So that's always going to be an option. Your ability to do it, your ability to just jump right in with both feet and start using the technology, understanding there's going to be a long learning curve if you're doing it yourself. So, so by the way, I'm not knocking uh, having a college degree. I have a college degree myself. Um, uh, what I am trying to provide is a pragmatic understanding of whether or not you need this degree to be successful in the cloud profession or, or not. And I think the reality is the answer to that is going to be no, you don't. Um, college degrees can be very expensive. People take out huge loans to get them. Uh, there's some advantages to having a college degree. Certainly, if you go to a uh, Ivy League university, if you're able to get into those, there's a social network where people are able to help you move your career along. And by the way, there's some companies that only hire people with college degrees and they only hire people from the uh, Ivy League. So there's that out there. Uh, so there's going to be some limitations in not having a college degree, but there's not as many limitations as there were 20 and 30 years ago. So that's what I'm trying to stress here. So that should never be a, a block for you uh, in not moving into the cloud computing field. Just the fact you're watching this video, for example, and you stayed this long, you know, tells me that you have the uh, the wherewithal and the and um, the desire to go off and learn this stuff and um, be better at what you need to do to be able to find better career paths, the ability to make more money in your career uh, and have more fun uh, in your career. And these jobs are fun. They, they pay well. They you work with uh, with very dynamic organizations. You get to work with great technology. If that motivates you or not, that should be something that uh, gets you up in the morning and, and gets you to work. Uh, so all those things are available to you as a resource. So what resources and tools you need to leverage? Well, again, there's training companies out there, LinkedIn Learning, Pluralsight. There's probably a dozen other companies out there. You can Google away for those, go Cloud Careers. You know, some of these, some of these uh, platforms host my, my training. You can go to universities, certainly community, co community colleges uh, have these sorts of skill programs as well, uh, where you can actually get an associate degree, uh, get college credit for learning this stuff. And you can actually transfer that associate degree into a four-year university if it's your desire to get a college degree. So those things are available to you. You can certainly learn yourself, uh, get books, um, you know, and, and read things, try them yourself. People have different ways in which they learn. For example, I'm an awful classroom learner. I don't like sitting in a classroom and, and learning at the pace of the instructor uh, because I'm kind of locked in there. I like to go at my pace, whether it's faster or slower. Uh, you may have the same sort of a learning pattern, but other people like to sit in a class and, and, uh, uh, and learn at the pace of the class. So it depends on how you learn. Uh, some people have learning disabilities that you need to work around. Uh, for example, I'm dyslexic. So I have to, uh, you know, look out for that sort of a limitation when I learn and just, but there's different paths to learning when you have some sort of a disability, whether it's minor or major. So the next steps are, um, if you're looking to move in this direction, is assess where you currently are and what you know. So uh, what is your skill level in terms of cloud computing? And by the way, it could be zero. Uh, you know, what is your degree, if you have a degree? And it could be in philosophy or it could be in computer science. Um, and then figure out the path that you need to go from your existing as-is state to your to-be state where you're going to be prepared to go off and get your first cloud job, um, which is something you're going to have to do yourself and have a self-assessment of where you are. And then put a plan together in terms of what you need to know and how long it's going to take you to learn something. So whether that's a micro certification with a cloud provider or you're getting the more meta certifications that are on the, the training program, such as the ability to get digital uh, transformation certification, cloud architect certification, AI architect certification, where you're going through a path of, say, uh, 20 or 30 different classes and getting to uh, a certification level where they're able to give you a certification that you've taken that training. And by the way, that doesn't mean that you're an expert in that technology. It tells me if I'm interviewing somebody there that they were able to go through the training and accomplish something, which is kind of what we've done with, with college degrees. We didn't really, weren't interested in what they learned in college for uh, the most part. It's the fact of the matter is they could get through a college degree. They could get to an end state, they accomplished something. So if they can accomplish a college degree, they can work on a project, they can work with a client. All those things are available to them. Well, that's all I have this week. Don't forget to like, subscribe. Also, uh, check out my InfoWorld blog, my 72-plus uh, uh, courses out on LinkedIn Learning. Check out my um, 
uh, AI architecture course out on Go Cloud Careers. Uh, also check me out on LinkedIn and check me out on Twitter. And don't forget my book, An Insider's Guide to Cloud Computing. If you're looking for kind of a common guide in a short form format, uh, where you can read the book in the weekend and get a good idea of what's going on in terms of cloud computing world. I think that's a good reference for doing that. So until next time, you guys stay safe. Cheers.